All right, hello everyone. So I have uh, the Rev Power USB charger. This is the 16750 milliamp hour version. It's recently sold at Amazon for like 11 bucks. Um, it's always on sale. So I figured I'd buy a few and take it apart and see what's inside. Um, I actually did take apart a few of them already. Um, so this will help illustrate the, the disassembly process. So as you can see here, this is the electronic board. This is kind of the housing and the battery itself I already extracted. Um, but this is just to illustrate where the tabs are. So if you can see, there's um, quite a bit. So there's two on the bottom side here, right? Uh, and then there's, there's four big ones and there's like two smaller ones. And then of course there's a few that holds the, the front part of it together. I find it that the best way af after disassembling a few of these is the um, the batteries are held on by these tape and so the best way to disassemble them without damaging the battery cells or the tabs is to actually take this side off first so if this was together right you want to take off this side first and then take off the kind of the, the surrounding and after that then you can easily peel off the battery without damaging or breaking the tabs so what I'm going to use is my trusty iFix iFixit toolkit. I found that this is probably the best. Um, if you guys have a equivalent uh, tool, then that's also fine. But the tool that I find best to use to assist, disassemble this is really this piece here. It's a uh, made made of stainless steel, probably, um, and that's how you break into the the battery pack itself. So that's that's all really all the tools I, I would need to remove this. What you want to uh, remove first is actually try to get these two guys first and then you know work your way around. Uh, so it doesn't look like it, but um, you can actually, if you can see it clearly here, I'm not sure it shows on the camera, but you can kind of stick your, your uh, iFixit thing in here and just kind of pop it out. So I would, it's like a little tab here, pop it in. I would go in here first and then pull it out. So at this point, pretty much disassembled. So, anyways, before we get any further, we re I would highly recommend to cut the the power in the ground. And just the, the only reason is just so that when you are prying it, the last piece apart, you don't accidentally you know, short something out and kind of damage the battery or start a fire. So. Going on that, I would recommend to cut the, the negative side first because, you know, obviously ground is a lot more pervasive in these circuit boards typically. So this is just the temper sensor. Uh, just go ahead and cut that first. I would, if you want to reuse that, I would cut it really close. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So that's the temperature sensor. Uh, and then I would recommend cutting the ground first just because, like I said before, ground is more pervasive. You, you know, for instance, this is ground. So if you cut that and touch this, that's fine, but if you you know touch the power and touch this, that's ground to power to ground. So go ahead and cut the, the ground first. That's a lot easier. And then once it's out of the way, then you have zero risk of actually cutting this and touching the ground there because that ground is now disconnected from the battery ground. Okay, so there you go. All right, so I go ahead. I went ahead and electrical taped the two ends there, just so that I don't short something out. Uh, this is just the temperature thermistor, so don't worry about it too much. Um, so okay, I'm gonna go ahead and continue this, which is basically again going through the same process is uh, as removing, but this time it's a lot easier just because things are exposed. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, there's this little tab here. I'm not sure you can see it. You notice it. Um, it's just one side. This side doesn't have it, so. It, you know, this is where you would, this would be your entry point. Um, so now that this is exposed, you could probably peel off the tab itself that's holding it. So 
again, you were destructively destroying it, so I would just kind of bend this all out so that when um, you do remove it, it makes it a lot easier. These are just help held in for that. Uh, if you want, you can try to you know use a plier and break this apart too, but I find it I don't need it. Um, so again, there's one, two, three, four, the big ones. There's two smaller ones here, which are a little more difficult to get to. And then there's these two smaller ones up here, and then maybe that's about it. All right, so at this point, uh, all the tabs, two here, two here, these two, and the final two here, they're all broken off, so you can probably get this thing off pretty easily. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and peel off the, peel off the battery. Now what I'll recommend is, um, so holding here and pulling it this way, if possible, because if you try to pull it this way, there's the only thing that's really holding it is these tabs. And then so when you kind of bend it, when you bend the, if you try to start from here and try to bend it this way, that's the easier way of doing it. But if you do that, that's going to damage the tabs here. So you want to use the structure of the battery itself to to peel off the plastic. So you want to grab here and twist this way versus this and twist this way, right? So. Okay. So that's the battery removed. Go ahead and remove this tape here. All right, so this is the full battery itself exposed. A couple things I notice. First is the red side is a positive and the bottom side is a ground. Now, another way you can tell is you can see these paper tabs that are protecting the positive from touching anything that's underneath this skin itself. So that's why it was very important to say that, hey, if you, know, you damaged the skin, just be careful that is fully negative, as you can see there. So anyways, if let's say you wanted to extract the battery uh, individually, I'm not going to go into detail. I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video, um, and I probably won't because I want to reuse this battery in this configuration. But if you wanted to do that, what I recommend is to first approach it by cutting the tab on the negative side. So very important, uh, and the reason is because right here, right now, if you actually try to cut into the positive side, and let's say you were putting some pressure, you can actually cut into the skin. And of course, anything under the skin, like I said before, is a negative. And so if you do that, you can potentially short out and cause spark and fire and all that stuff and damage the battery all in one shot. So what I recommend is to get some leverage first by cutting the negative side. And again, you get, this time you don't have to worry about it because, you know, this and this is, you know, it's all negative. So you can see there, right? So you go ahead and cut that part off. Then when you finally cut that part off, you can leverage it by bending this out. Again, this is just tab, you're extracting the cells anyways. Bend it out and then go ahead and cut that part here. And then for, you know, repeat the whole process for all the other cells. Um, so that's the way I would do it if you were to extract the individual cells. Now, the other thing that's very important is if you plan to reuse a cell, again, this doesn't, this lacks the protection circuit, as you can see here. This is just the raw cell itself. Typically with a protection circuit, there's something underneath here or on the top or something to kind of um, protect the cell itself. Now here in this thing, uh, and this is these typically these uh, USB charger batteries um, pack, they typically have the protection cell in here. Um, and I might take a picture of this and go into analysis of what the circuit is, but um, just to let you know that this doesn't have any protection. So if you are using it, uh, be you know careful when you're charging, especially, and also when you're discharging it, make sure you use some pr um, protection circuits and whatnot. And then finally, if you are going to reuse this battery in some other configuration, let's say you didn't need the protection, um, just note that batteries, lithium batteries themselves, they don't, don't do not like heat, right? So um, you highly, I highly recommend if you have a spot welder, um, go ahead and use that to kind of weld, you know, additional additional tabs to you know different configuration if you wanted it to. Um, if you don't have a spot welder, which most people won't. Uh, what I recommend is to, if you are going to cut this, 
um, try to get it like right here cut it like right here in the negative side so that you have a lot of tabs to work with right same thing when you're gonna cut the next one you know you cut here cut here and all that stuff and so what that does is it allows you a lot of tabs to bend over so then you can fold that tab over and then when you do solder solder on the tab not on the cell itself right so this is a nickel tab typically solder that solder put a lot of solder you know use a high wattage uh, soldering iron and put solder on the soldering tab similarly on this side same thing if you can try to cut you know you want to cut here and here and all the stuff so you get a lot of tab right you can fold it and then when you fold it then you solder on the tab you're not soldering on the cell that helps with uh, preserving the battery life of the cell now you can solder it on directly a cell but again lithium batteries don't like heat so when you're transferring the heat from the soldering iron it can uh, damage and, and reduce the life of your battery itself so that's all I wanted to talk about. Um, thank you for watching the video. And if you made it this far, again, I appreciate um, you watching through the whole thing. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment and I'll try to answer them as accurately and as possible, accurately and, and correctly as possible. Thanks.